Hi, my name is Randall Loy. You found us on the Infertility Channel. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm appreciative that you're here. We're going to actually start with a question. Uh, this is from Ellen from Florence, Montana, not Florence, Italy. Ellen asks, I've been on Clomid for three cycles. Now my doctor has recommended Femora. I've heard that Femora may not be safe. What do you think? Great question, Ellen. I'd like to talk to you about that for a few minutes. And I'm going to use this little drawing over here to help make that more understandable. Now, Femora is the trade name for letrozole. Letrozole is a third generation so-called aromatase inhibitor. And we've talked about this in previous episodes, but let me just refresh your memory. Aromatase is an enzyme that converts male hormones, androgens, into female hormones, estrogens. And that happens in the ovary. Now, aromatase is found not only in the ovary, but it's found in the testes, the brain, and the fat. So it's possible for all of those organs and others really to be able to convert androgens into estrogens. So typically, Femora or letrozole is prescribed for about three to five cycle days per month. It can be prescribed even longer, but letrozole is a pill and it starts at 2.5 milligrams, goes up to 7.5 or even 10 milligrams per day and it is very effective in getting absorbed rapidly and shutting off these aromatase enzymes. Now, specifically with respect to the ovary, I'm going to blow this up a little bit. So the ovary usually makes one dominant follicle per month. It's an egg-containing cyst and around the periphery, now think about this three-dimensionally and please forgive my terrible drawings. So these granulosa cells nourish that egg cell and it turns out that androgens like testosterone and androstenedione dione are made by the theca cells outside of the follicle and the granulosa cells have the aromatase enzyme. So what happens is that testosterone is typically converted into the most potent estrogen called estradiol and androstenedione dione is converted into one that's not quite as strong called estrone. And both of these androgens can be interconverted as can the estrogens. But what happens is when you take these pills for three, four, five days a month, they act on the enzyme system in the granulosa cells and they shut off this reaction. So what happens is that there is less in the way of estrogen feeding back to the pituitary and to the hypothalamus. Now I know what you're thinking. This is not a scrotum and a poorly endowed person here. It's actually, this is the optic chiasm. It's the nerve where the optic nerve kind of crosses be behind the eyes and in front of the pituitary gland. This is the front of the pituitary, the back of the pituitary, and this is the hypothalamus here. So very, very critical obviously for ovulation. So what happens is that the lower estrogen level by aromatase causes the front of the pituitary to increase its follicle stimulating hormone. And that goes down and causes these cells to proliferate and nourish that egg better. So that's the way letrozole works. It's very, very safe. It has a half-life, a terminal half-life of around 42 hours, which practically means by the time that that embryo reaches your uterus, it is out of your body. And Ellen, speaking of the safety of this, Dr. Talandi, Togus Talandi in Montreal at McGill back in 2006 looked at 911 patients who had been exposed to Femora. And Dr. Talandi found that the birth defect rate or genetic problems with Femora were 2.4% and with Clomid they were 4.8%, so exactly one half. Now let's talk a little bit about Clomid and its mechanism. Now Clomid, as you know, is it's an old medication. It's been around for 50 years. It's a so-called selective estrogen receptor modulator, or a CIRM. But CIRMs actually affect estrogen receptors. So we know that Clomid is a weak estrogen. It's a weak anti-estrogen, and it binds estrogen receptor sites up here in the hypothalamus. So it basically imposes a blockade on the hypothalamus. Now, different from letrozole, we have a normal amount of estrogen feeding back to the pituitary and hypothalamus. But as you can see, there's that block. Clomid has blocked out 
the estrogen. So the brain thinks, hey, too little estrogen, too little estrogen, and red lights go off in the pituitary and the hypothalamus, and so it does the only thing it knows how to do. Once again, in response to this blockade, more FSH is elaborated, which goes down and will increase those granulosa cells, and in Clomid, it tends to increase or has the possibility of increasing even another follicle. So whereas with letrozole, the twin rate is less than 1%, with Clomid, it is around 7 or 8%. So in many ways, we feel that letrozole may be the drug of choice. So late last year at our annual meeting, the American Society of Reproductive Medicine meeting, there was a great paper from the National Institutes of Health that suggested that letrozole was even more efficacious in polycystic ovarian syndrome patients than Clomid. And they recommended in that abstract that letrozole become the first line of therapy for patients with PCOS. Over the last several years, there have been several studies, including systematic reviews and meta-analyses, compilations of studies, which have suggested that letrozole is at least as effective in inducing ovulation as Clomid. So for the past 14 years or so, we've been using letrozole as a primary drug. One more word, Ellen, about efficacy. And this comes back to a statement by the makers of Femara, Novartis is the pharmaceutical company. Back in 2005, they issued a statement that Femara is contraindicated, not indicated, in women who are going to become pregnant, are pregnant, or breastfeeding because there could be birth defects associated. So Ellen, thanks once again for that question. I do believe that letrozole is safe, once again, because it's out of your system by the time that the embryo gets into your uterus. We believe it is the drug for 2014, the first line therapy, and it's probably gonna be the drug for the foreseeable future. Now, one last thing, I am not an artist. I only try to play one on YouTube, so please forgive the graphic images today. Thanks so much for joining me today. Be sure to share this video with your friends and subscribe to catch all new episodes each week here on the Infertility Channel. Plus, follow us on Facebook and Twitter. I love hearing from you. Comment below or tell me what you want to see on future episodes by sending me an email to comments at infertilitychannel.org. Until next week.